crab. Step one. And for this, we're going to use a number four short shank stainless steel hook and some tan monocord thread, something a little bit uh, heavier. Step two. First, we're going to take a piece of uh, olive marabou, some to match the color of the body of the fly you're going to tie. We're just going to tie in the tips here, just to keep the tail quite thin. You find the tip of the marabou is a lot uh, thinner than the lower fibers. Quite short. Step three. Now we're going to take some ram's wool, and this is a really good material for this fly. And take off and cut off a fair sized chunk of it. We're going to take and figure eight it crossways across our fly. Now this is an olive. It also uh, is a good fly tied in tan or white. What makes this material uh, suitable for this fly? Uh, it comes in nice colors and it uh, also flares out quite nicely for you. You can see there how it's flaring out on both sides of the hooks. It fills up the space. It's also good material to, to shape after you've tied it in. Step four. Here we go in with another, another clump of uh, ram's wool with the identical step to the last one. Lots of figure eights here. Lots of figure eights. You want that securely on there. You're trying to uh, get it so it won't slide around on you. Definitely separate the clump and make sure you don't wrap the last clump in there. Kind of work your thread in and around in order to get it tied in. You can see there to keep them separate. Otherwise it'll just mat down and it won't flare out on you. Step 5. See there, we're going to get this one in. Make sure that the uh, last two clumps are pushed right up tight against each other. Keep them separate. Be generous with the thread. Step six. Now here we're going to add a bit of weight. This is bead chain. It's not that heavy. Some lead eyes might be a better idea. It's a good idea to get them tied in right now before you trim the body, just to get it out of the way. Gives you something to grab onto and pull that uh, ram's wool out of the way when you're ready to whip finish. And again, get those eyes tied in nice and tight. And this is another reason we use a thicker thread. Builds up and then you can put a lot more tension on it than say standard six aught. Now whip finish the fly because we're going to stop it here for a bit. Trim up the body. Step seven. Make sure you got the ram's wool nice and flared out. Just get rid of that long part first. Now trim off the top and the bottom to start. Try and get them quite flush. Start by trimming your crab to shape. And remember, this is only one shape of crab and only one style of a crab fly. There's uh, lots of other ways to do this. Find some crabs are more round than others and some have uh, a lot more pointed sides. Because crabs swim sideways, so the eye and the tail end of the hook are really the sides of the fly. So sometimes you'll find they should be a little more pointed than this. Step 8. Here we're going to take a piece of furry foam, which is two-sided, and we're going to cut a round piece to match the size of the body. Step 9. And now, before we put that on, we're going to take and glue in with Zappa Gap two or three sets of rubber legs. 
So you're just doing doing that as one step. You're not uh, cutting six legs, for instance. You're just laying them right across. Yeah, I just cross them. And add that third leg. You can also mark these with a felt marker if you want them to be a little bit more speckled or mottled. Step 10. Now we're going to take and separate our furry foam. You can see how it comes apart there eventually. Put a little bit of Zappa Gap, which is going to dry a bit hard. A bit on both surfaces. Don't want to overdo it though. Place it on top and cover up those legs, which we've placed on the bottom underside of the hook. Make sure you don't get it on your fingers, it's just like crazy glue. You really only have a couple seconds to push that in place. Can you use another type of glue? Uh, you can use a barge cement or something that's going to dry secure. And is waterproof, I imagine. Exactly. Do the same for the top. The fly can be left as is. It doesn't need these top and bottom shell. It just adds to the uh, effect. To also alter the color a little bit. Make sure you place those on right the first time because there's no second try. Now that you've got them on there, try and push them to push them flat. Try and get the sides a little bit flatter, kind of pancake together. And again, you don't really have much time to do this. The glue dries so fast. Step 11. Now what we're going to do is neaten up the body a little bit and cut some of that excess furry foam or ram's wool off. Now you can trim those legs to the right length that you want them. You can use a thicker leg or a thinner leg, it's up to you, and also mark them up with a felt marker just to get some modeled appearance to them. This is a bonefish fly, is it? A bonefish or a permit fly. Mm -hmm. 